What's up everybody, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hole Audio and Visual and we are back with another tutorial. I know we've been away for a little while, we wanted to enjoy the holidays. End of the year was crazy for us with the sales. If any of you picked anything up, we really, really appreciate it. You guys were amazing. So we just had to get all that stuff squared away, get everything in line for this year, so we decided to take December pretty much off from YouTube. Now that we're back though, we're excited to start bringing you more content. So if you wanna see anything in the near future, let us know in the comments down below. Let's actually talk about why we're here today. So we get the question on the channel a lot and in the Facebook group a lot, how do you add width to a vocal? And this is kind of a weird two-sided question because a lot of people view a vocal, especially like a lead vocal, as a very main central mono element. And I mean, realistically, most of the time it is, at least the lead vocal, it's just gonna be a mono vocal right down the middle. But in pop songs, especially now that everything's getting a little more polished, a lot of people wanna add width to either that one vocal or they wanna figure out how to get that big stacked vocal sound. So in this video, we're gonna go over five ways to add width to your vocal, but still keep it right in the middle of your track and keep it as a focus element. If you have any questions about the techniques that we're gonna go over, comment down below and we can easily walk you through or somebody else in the comments can walk you through. There are so many ways that you can add width and depth to your vocals, so don't take these five tips as an end-all be-all. These are all just really, really good starting places and then I would take these techniques, figure out what your kind of sauce is, what your kind of flavor is, and then start doing those in your own productions. But without further ado, let's actually hop into the DAW and go over five ways to add width to your vocals. Okay, so we're gonna actually hop into the session. For this video today, we're gonna be looking at a song that I just finished up that I'm gonna be releasing uh, next month in February called Even Though It Kills Me. So um, if you guys wanna stay up to date, you can easily go follow my artist page on Spotify. If you don't want to, you don't have to. We just get the questions of what songs we use a lot. So I figured I would let you know before we actually dive in. So I know you heard the preview at the beginning of the video. That's actually the hook of the song and that talks about layers, which we'll go over a little later, but I know that a lot of you want to work with one single vocal because maybe you're a mix engineer that doesn't get a lot of layers or maybe uh, you don't want a lot of layers for a verse because that's a very specific aesthetic. So let's go ahead and let's look at just one lead vocal. So this is what it sounds like in the mix with everything. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. So let's talk about the first thing that you can do to add width and that is going to be modulation effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off. So I'll just let you know, typically for my lead vocal, I'll work on a mono track in Cubase because I'm not ever gonna wanna do any stereo inserts. But on things like background vocals or oohs and ahs, typically I'll put those on a stereo track in Cubase. That way if I wanna go ahead and add reverb or delay or modulation specifically to that track as an insert right here, I can go ahead and do that. But if I wanna go ahead and use synths and stuff, it's not gonna affect that. So this lead vocal is on a mono track so you won't really see any stereo effects over here. So. We can do a whole nother video in the future on how to actually mix a vocal and get this chain, but let's go ahead and let's actually start talking about adding that width. So we've got the main vocal right here that has no sins on it whatsoever. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to add modulation. So that could be any kind of chorus, doubler. Um, I like to use Roland Dimension D from UAD. That to me is just a really, really nice polish. I think that I saw uh, either like an engineer for Justin Bieber or something like that using it. So I gave it a shot and I have loved it. I love it because there's not a lot of knobs for me to get lost into. So on this, all you have to do is go through these. I like dimension mode three that adds a nice little bit of width, but doesn't make it too coarsey or phasey. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add that on, on and send. And then I'll go ahead and also scoop a little bit of the low end out because I don't want any of that buzziness, like that little low end hum coming from the sides. And I don't really want any of that really sharp, uh, like seven and a half, eight K coming from the sides either because I don't want the sibilance uh, to hit the stereo field too much because that'll come all from the middle. So basically what I do is I'll just turn this on um, and I'll show you guys what it's like. If you don't have this, you can use something like waves doubler or any kind of chorus effect. The main key is that you wanna add the modulation on a send so then you can blend it in. So here's what it sounds like with nothing. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy. When I was in your you can see when I just turn it on, even though it's mixed at negative 30 dB, we're already gonna get a little bit of that effect. So that's the reason I don't use this a ton in a mix. I'll just add it in and barely sprinkle it. Adds a nice little bit of like width and shine. But if you add it too much, it'll start to sound like this. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy. 
when I was in your eyes. I know so I like it just there enough to add that width and add that little bit of sparkle that Dimension D will add, but not so much to where it starts to sound like it's got a chorus or a doubler or something like that on it, because then it can just get a little bit disorienting. And um, to be honest, sometimes that works for songs, but on a typical pop song, you're not gonna want that as like a super, super strong effect all the way through. So step number one, add something like a chorus or some kind of Dimension plugin on Ascend, blend that into taste. Uh, let's go to number two and it's probably my favorite, and that's actually using reverbs. So you'll see in the future that number five is, you know, just a little hint, is gonna be mixing everything together, so we'll kind of show you how that goes along the way. But for number two, using reverbs, you've got short reverbs and you've got long reverbs, you've got consistent reverbs all the way through, you can do reverb throws. So this to me is like unlimited potential. So let's go ahead and listen where we're at with just the chorus. I knew this was coming, it wasn't a surprise. Now, the first thing that I like to do to add some width especially is add a short reverb. And the reason I add a short reverb instead of a long one is because long reverbs tend to add more depth rather than width. And typically I like for me to find out where it's going in the stereo field before I find out how forward or backwards it needs to be. So I love using Verb Suite for this for a few reasons. For one, just the models that it's got in it are incredible. So for my short reverb, I'll typically go to the BM7 and I'll typically do something like small vox uh, because that's a pretty short and tight room. However, it's big enough that it doesn't really sound like that like kind of 80s non-linear gated reverb. It's just gonna give you a little bit of width and a little bit of space. So let's go ahead and turn that on and we'll kind of adjust some settings as we go. So here's what it sounds like with that on. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. So you can see it almost gives it like a little bathroom effect. Uh, to me, if you use that too much, the vocal gets kind of weird and thin and tinny, and it just, again, becomes a little bit disorienting. So what I like to do is I like to blend that in lightly. But the reason that I really prefer Verb Suite is because, and a lot of reverbs have this as well, uh, but anything that's going to give you some kind of width option is really nice, because some songs I like to actually have a mono reverb and a mono delay, that way everything on the, shot, on the sides can actually shine, and that vocal just sits a little bit better in the middle of the mix. But if you're wanting a wide reverb, you can go ahead and you can add your width up to 6 dB on the side. I never add it too, too much because I do so many forms of adding with, I don't really need to drive that that hard in one reverb. But let me just show you guys, uh, you know, for actual demonstration purposes. So I'll turn it up pretty high so you can hear it pretty easily. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. I know we... So I like it just somewhere right in the middle. I like to drive my pre-delay up a little bit on reverbs and delays just so they don't come in immediately and get really washed out. Um, so I'll, I'll typically set the pre-delay anywhere from like 10 to 20 milliseconds depending on the song and how pushed back I want it to be. Longer reverbs, as you'll see in a second, will go a little bit farther back. So that's gonna add a bit of width on the sides and not so much depth. Then to add the depth, I will add the longer reverb, which again is gonna be Verb Suite and that is just the BM7 on the vocal plate. So similar settings, this one's like 20 milliseconds like I just said, I'll drive the attack up a little bit. I do keep that width right in the middle and then I'll blend that in as well. And so when I engage that send, you'll kind of see what that sounds like. And that's gonna be like this. I knew this was coming, it wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. We've been sleeping in a bed that's full of lies Every night So as you can see, we're already getting a little bit of that width. Let me go ahead and show you guys the before and after so far. I knew this was coming It wasn't a surprise Cause you were never happy When I was in your eyes so it's just enough reverb to push it a little bit back in the mix and give it some extra space, but not get really washy and really ambient. So let's go ahead and take a look at tip number three. Tip number three is gonna be adding delays. So you can kind of add these in the same space that you would add a reverb. I like to add stereo delays in tracks a lot. I'm not a super huge fan of mono delays just because they tend to get really cluttered with the vocal. I'll pretty much only do mono delays if it's like a delay throw. Um, or something where the delay is kind of sitting on its own. But let's go ahead and look at the first thing that you should do to add some width. And that is gonna be some kind of like really fast delay, slap back delay, something like that. So I'm gonna be using H delay. You could easily use something like Echo Boy or Repeater. Um, pretty much any delay that has a stereo setting will work for this. So on my slap delay, it's H delay. And I've got this set to 1 16th ping pong. 
I like to filter out the high end and filter out the low end. That way it doesn't get super cluttered again on the sides. I like to keep my sides pretty tight, at least frequency wise. That way it's not everything everywhere. Um, figuring out where everything is going to sit in terms of space, in terms of depth, and in terms of actual frequency response is going to be huge for getting your mixes to sound a bit more clear and just upfront. So what we'll do is we'll throw this on a pretty fast setting like 1 16th ping pong. Um, and since it's ping pong, that is going to add quite a bit of depth. So take a listen as I start to engage that. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. I know we've been sleeping in a bed. So you can see that that slap delay is going to give that a ton of width because you're actually getting a pretty significant delay on each side. And so the longer delay, the more you have everything spread out. Uh, just the wider it's going to sound in general. If you have everything super quick and super tight, that does start to kind of draw everything a little bit more in. Um, just because the, the shorter it is, the less time it has to actually reverb off, and it doesn't give you that sense of like, oh, I'm in a really wide space. I'm just in a little narrow box. So there's time and place for both. For this, I wanted something that was pretty loose and was going to let me actually uh, really get outside of that typical box. So here's what it sounds like with that in the mix. And to me, that was probably the biggest game changer on this specific mix. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. I know we've been sleeping in a bed that's full of lies. Every and the beautiful thing about doing these on sends, we haven't really been doing them so far. I make a whole nother video on how to actually process your reverbs and delays, but I'll always kind of EQ, compress, filter, saturate, modulate, do literally anything I want to these sends. That way, once it's coming back, it's exactly how I want it to sound. And then I can just blend it into my mix. So like, um, you'll see with this next delay that we're about to do, I'll send that to my reverb, my long reverb. That way uh, it's in the same space as my actual vocal. So we don't have a very, very dry, long delay. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. That's going to be the last thing that we talk about in terms of delays. So this is just going to be a fourth delay stereo ping pong. You've probably seen me do it on the channel quite a bit. Use H delay. Um, again, filter out the highs, filter out the lows. I'll turn the feedback down on this one because since it is a fourth ping pong, I don't want that to just continue forever. Um, that gets really, really irritating. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of leave it here, blend in some of that reverb so that has a little bit of space. And then as I mix that in, that's going to add a lot more depth than width, but it still kind of helps. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were never happy when I was in your eyes. I know we were sleeping in a bed that's full of lies every night. I knew this was coming. It wasn't a surprise. Cause you were. So now we've added modulation, we've added reverb, and we've added delay. That's all the effects we're going to go over in this video. The next thing that we're going to talk about is actual technique. So you've seen maybe that I have this down here kind of muted. Another good way to add width to your vocals, and this is not one of the tips that we're going to go over, but it's just to add these like kind of weird little effects tracks. Um, so this is just the lower octave, and you'll see that it has doubler on it, so it's just really wide. So adding little stuff like that that's not really heard in the mix, it's more so just felt, is another really, really easy way. This was coming. It wasn't a surprise. And then, of course, you've got your delay throws at the end of sentences. So this is a good example of when I'll do a mono delay. Um, not necessarily mono, it's more so just down the middle. And then I'll add something like doubler to kind of separate that. Because, again, I don't love my vocals really falling right in the center of a track. So without that, um, sounds like this. But I really like the more kind of chorusy, phasey sound. And this is a good example of when I'll use stereo tracks instead of mono tracks. So let's go ahead and actually talk about tip number four, and that's going to be actually layering your vocals. So a big thing that I tell people, especially artists that I'm producing or mixing for, is that the more vocals I get, the more flexibility we have in terms of width, depth, space, and just different stuff to pick from. Um, so really, if you're wanting to get that kind of wide pop vocal, your best bet is going to be actually tracking that vocal again to pan on the left side, tracking it again to pan on the right side. And you can do this as many times as you want. I've seen artists do three. That's typically what I do. It's just one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right. And then they'll do the same thing with harmony. So harmony on the left, harmony on the right, different harmony on the left, different harmony on the right, etc. I always like to, unless there's something that I'm like doing a specific, almost like vocal quartet arrangement, I'll typically at least double everything. That way I can spread them out and get a really even stereo field. 
someone like Charlie Puth, who's doing like these really big kind of acapella arrangements, you'll hear in his stuff a lot that he'll pan specific harmonies to sit in that point because it's actually creating like this whole blanket of a, of a vocal cord almost. But we're not gonna do that in this. We're more so just talking about how to get a consistent pop vocal that is really wide and really bright. So as you can see, we just do that right here. Every night. And what I like to do is I like to typically tune the sides a little bit harder than the lead vocal, uh, just so it's not really getting out of pitch. And then what I'll also do is vocal line those to the actual thing. So I shouldn't say vocal line because I'm actually using Cubase's built-in audio alignment. Um, but if you have anything like vocal line or Revoice Pro, those are also incredible for this. The rule of thumb is that the more tight you get it, the more consistent it's going to be as one vocal. So this will just sound like one wide vocal opposed to maybe three different vocals where if you have something like a choir or a gang vocal, you'll want to leave that timing a little off and that pitch a little off because all of that separation and timing and pitch is going to make it sound like multiple people doing multiple things. But for this, I wanted just one consistent vocal that just felt really thick. Every night. And then you can even add on to that by adding your harmonies and panning your harmonies out. Every night. And then that goes even a bit farther in the actual chorus. So we've got a lead vocal, a lead vocal on the left, a lead vocal on the right, a harmony on the left, a harmony on the right, a different harmony on the right, a different harmony on the left. We've got that low octave that's kind of spread out with a doubler, and then we've also got a vocoder, and we've got an extra vocal reverb. So there's a lot going on vocally in terms of this chorus, and that's what it's going to sound like. So this is a good example of when you want that wide, thick vocal, take the extra time and do the extra tracks, because there is no way to get this sound I'm about to show you with one vocal. So once you have your vocals for the left and for the right and for the center, you can kind of mix and match everything and you can decide, you know, do I want stuff like the doubler and all of the stereo reverbs and delays on those side harmonies? on those side versions. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it might muddy up that stereo feel a little bit. So just experiment and try them out. And let's talk about tip number five, and we've kind of been talking about that the entire video, and that is just using everything in moderation and layering. So to me, you're not gonna get a very, very good wide vocal if you're doing too much of anything. You're more so just gonna get a vocal that is soaked in that one specific effect. So if you want something that feels consistent, it feels like a pop vocal, it, actually sits front and center in your mix, but it still has that width, it still has that space and that character, your best bet is going to be actually mixing stuff like the delays, the reverbs, the modulations, adding your layers, and then doing weird things to those layers. Just doing all of these cool effects on top of each other and lightly blending them lets each one of them pull a little bit of weight, but not have to do too, too much of one thing. And that's it. As you can see, a vocal is really, really, really easy to keep right in the middle or it's also really easy to go ahead and add a little bit of width and a little bit of depth. I like to mix and match these techniques and do a little bit of everything, that way you're not getting one thing carrying the entire weight. I don't wanna use something like a doubler or a chorus and just drive it because then that becomes a really, really heard effect and not so much just a width addition. And then same thing with reverb, you have to be careful about how much you add because then the song gets washed out, the vocals fall to the back. So if you're able to take kind of short reverbs, long reverbs, short delays, long delays, modulation effects, and then all blend them together with actually recording side versions of that vocal, you're gonna get a wide vocal that doesn't really have a signature effect sound that you might not be wanting. So you can kind of avoid that chorusy or phasey sound that I know a lot of you wanna get away from. But if you have any questions, like I said before, let us know in the comments below. If you guys wanna see anything else, let us know in the comments so we can make some content. We'll be having videos come out every week for the near future, so definitely stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. If you like this video and you wanna learn more about vocal engineering and vocal mixing, we do have courses on our website. Go over to makepopmusic.com right now. Check those out. Other than that, if you're not in the group, join the group so we can all chat about new releases. We can all chat about techniques. And other than that, we will see you guys next time. Much love, Make Pop Music. Peace out.